Well, hello everyone. We're doing um, an unscheduled show for today. We've had some traumatic earth events going on. You've probably heard about Ecuador and Japan, but know that most of this planet is shaking right now. The first report I, I received on Ecuador when I woke up this morning was it was an 8.3. I don't know if it was officially downgraded, but as we've seen in previous events, they changed it to sound like it wasn't quite that bad. We have... We have a lot happening right now. Some of these things may just sound like it's, I don't know, coincidence. But the planet's land masses are shifting right now. There is nothing we can do about this. Harp did not do this. All the planets in this solar system are acting rather strange right now. And if you get a chance to look at the RSOE map, you'll see that it's not just one event, it's many. Now you guys know that I've been following Cash and he talked about this separation. I ran in Turkey, probably next. Southern Europe has already started. U.S. soon. So the reports are shifting. The plates themselves are shifting. All seismographs and actually the ones um, in some of the areas we've been looking at have been turned right off so it's it's difficult to say unusual frightening thing taking place on this planet right now our entire land masses all the plates are shifting it began with an explosive magnitude 7.8 now they're saying earthquake in Ecuador around 8 o'clock last night it has not stopped since so the entity I'm going to call it an entity <laughs> that monitors earthquake throughout well, throughout the United States and Canada, throughout the planet. They run advanced nation seismic sensors. These are the backbone of all earthquake monitoring systems. Specifically, the ANSS has about 88 seismographs just in the United States they are linked up with all the others. With the exception of two seismographs that are not functioning, all of the United States, all of Canada, this one huge landmass is quivering. All of them. It's as though the earthquake has shaken the planet like we've seen in earthquakes like, for instance Chile it not only shook deep enough it threw us out of time we lost time it looks like this event has done the exact same you may not feel the vibrations but the seismographs confirm this is taking place wherever you live please just check out your earthquake monitors I 
as the vibration goes on. And remember, most of these are very deep ones. So this is, this is crustal formation stuff. As this goes on, it is loosening things beneath us. As these vibrations continue, it's likely to trigger other earthquakes. We have heard and will hear that that does not happen. But when pressure builds, it must be released. This is one global family. And we are seeing this. When we look at the RSOE, which was down for a little while this morning, the alert map is back up and it's going absolutely nuts. Especially around the Ring of Fire, although it kind of looks like, well, if you take a look at Europe, if you take a look at um, especially the Ring of Fire, it's just shaking. It looks like We've said this before, that the southern continents are moving up. Kind of looks like Africa is about to slam into Europe. Although the northern African ones, it seems to me, now I hate to speculate, but it looks like they've been turned off. Because I'm no longer seeing anything from that because we have Ecuador, we have Japan, we have India reacting with a heat wave that's completely unprecedented. Floods and horrific changes. We will hear a lot about geoengineering as well. But this time, guys, I I just don't think so. I don't think this is it. Because we have other events. Last night, Mars was closer than it's been in 10 years. Which is strange. Suddenly NASA is having solar stream alerts. Several things. Now, geomagnetic activity. They said should stay low in the next couple days. But they knew for sure that the conditions would shift by Monday. The Earth enters a stream of high-speed solar wind. The solar wind is flowing out of this corona hole in the sun. This corona hole is so big that you could see it without a telescope on Earth. Now, the holes are places in the sun's upper atmosphere where the magnetic fields almost peel back. This allows the solar wind to escape. I have an image of that from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory that the flow of the solar wind is traced by the arrows. It's going everywhere, basically. So, it might not do the fantastic auroras that we've seen, but positive polarity and magnetic fields from the sun absolutely do, even though NASA is saying it doesn't. They link to the Earth's planetary magnetic field. It spikes, it jumps, it has an effect on us. It has an effect physically on us. Now, this sunspot, AR2529, is so big that people saw it at sunset. And I have an image of that. It's actually quite pretty from the Netherlands. And luckily, there were thin enough clouds filtering most of the sunlight so they could see it with the naked eye. Of course, I say don't look at it directly, although I know a lot of people are doing 
sun gazing right now. This is huge. And although they're saying it has a stable magnetic field, these things, whether they cause flares or not, the sun is surprisingly not flaring at this point where it should be by all the models and from what we've seen before. Doesn't matter if this is going to flare. The sun's field is actually much stronger than it's ever been. We've never seen this combination of events before, so we have Mars, who was very close last night. We have Jupiter and the Moon, by the way, tonight. If you look east, Jupiter and the Moon are in, con in conjunction, only two degrees apart. When we have planetary alignments, and I'm counting the moon this time as one, it affects us. It affects the planet. Now, they've also been talking about the cosmic rays in the atmosphere. They've started announcing it, which means this is major, because I've never seen them announce it before. Now, this is from spaceweather.com. And the students of Earth to Sky Calculus are flying space weather balloons. They're equipped with radiation sensors that detect cosmic rays that could be coming from the sun or anywhere, basically. This is space weather. That affects Earth weather. weather. So, cosmic rays. They see clouds, they trigger lightning, they penetrate commercial airplanes, they penetrate your physical body. So the measurements show that someone flying back and forth across continental USA, anyway, can absorb as much radiation as two to five dental x-rays. This is why a couple years ago we told you that they were starting to limit people who were frequent flyers. So the radiation levels peak at entrance to the stratosphere. The radiation levels there are more than 80 times above sea level. So the radiation sensors on these healing balloons are tech, detecting X-rays, gamma rays, these energies. Span the range above and below um, medical X-ray machines, airport security scanners. These things are absolutely affecting us. For some reason which I, you know, maybe it's the never straight answer thing that we usually get. But it's absolutely affecting this planet. And we've seen before that certain events trigger other events. And we have some that are just odd. Just odd. And I, I couldn't ignore it because we have good things going on and bad things. And this paradigm shift is underway. It's advancing rapidly. How it unfolds, I, I don't know. It could go either way. We've had ancient peoples tell us about this, that the earth herself may decide to wipe out most of the population here. It's creepy when you think about the Georgia Guidestones who are saying they might do it too, but at this point I'm thinking it's not them. They're doing other horrific things, stealing mineral re resources to the point where it's killing people. There are certain ebbs and flows with this planet. For instance, 
springtime, people start getting happier. You can go outside more. You get more rays from the trees and from the sun. And yes, the trees and the grass actually produce almost that happy pill sort of effect. But we have another five attempted suicides in Canada. On that one reserve that I've been telling you about, it's terrifying these events happening all at once. There are a lot of things affecting this. And we've talked and spoken of the horrific poverty that's going on in Native Reserves. But this and these things, that specific reserve, has diamond mines. And they will do anything for more money. These are the individuals that are attacking the entire planet and all of us for money. I don't know, maybe their plan is to actually go somewhere else. Either way, they don't care. They really don't. And as for can we eat better to save ourselves and strengthen our bodies? We need to look this in the face. All of our food is gemet genetically modified now. All of it. So, in the past week, you've probably eaten crops that wouldn't exist in nature. Or that have evolved extra genes to reach freakish sizes. You've probably eaten cloned food. You may have eaten plants whose ancestors were once deliberately blasted with radiation. You could have bought all of this from the organic section of your local supermarket. So the anti-GM dogma is obscuring the real debate over what level of genetic modification society deems acceptable. Genetically modified food is often regarded as something you're either for or against. It's misleading to consider GM technology a binary decision and a blanket ban like those in many European countries are most likely to stifle the well they will stifle for the debate but it doesn't end it and banning GM crops is not enough it's too late for that now and after all our food is no longer natural and even the most basic crops are the result of the form of human manipulation between organic foods and the tobacco engineered glow in the dark lie <laughs> a spectrum of or a broad spectrum of modifications worthy of consideration all of these technologies are sometimes lumped together as GM carrots, corn, watermelons all the food you might eat without even considering. Yet when you consider their wild ancestors, none of these are organic or not, are even recognizable to what they were. Domestic generations and domestication generally involves selecting for specific traits, high yield, for instance, over time, many generations of selection change that plants, alters the plant's genetic makeup. That does not make it any less toxic than what Monsanto is doing 
It doesn't. And they, man-made anyway, selection is capable of generating forms that are extremely unlikely or darn right would never happen. Then we have genome duplications, unlikely selection by our ancestors. Also involved a genetic process that we only discovered recently although we've been doing it for ever. Humans have half a set of chromosomes, structures that package and organize your genetic information from each plant. Some organisms can have two or more complete duplicate sets of chromosomes. It's widespread in plants and often the result it results in exaggerated traits like size, thought to be the result of multiple gene copies in the same plant. So without realizing it, many crops have been unintentionally bred. They have a higher level of this. as things like large plants or fruit or vigorously growing things are desirable. Ginger and apples are an example. Potato and cabbage are another. Some strawberry varieties are called octopoid because they can have eight reoccurring genes. It means eight sets of complete chromosomes compared to the two that humans have. Look at that with the cosmic radiation that's coming in. It affects us. It affects the planet. It affects the animals. It affects the foods we eat. Cloning. Cloning in plants is ancient too. Now the word tends to conjure up discomfort. No one wants to eat something cloned. Yet, a sexual reproduction is the core strategy for many plants in nature and farmers have utilized this to perfect their crops. So pretty much from the time we forced plants to grow in fields because plants normally don't, they're scattered. We've changed everything. So once a plant with desirable characteristics is found, particularly tasty, durable, a banana, for instance, cloning allows us to grow identical or well, replicates. This can be entirely natural. Cutting. With, with a cutting or runner, and artificially induced plant hormones as well, domestic bananas have long since lost their seeds that allowed their wild ancestors to reproduce. If you eat a banana today, you are eating a clone. You are. That is a clone. We have induced mutations, selections, both human and natural, operates on the genetic variation within the species. If a trait or characteristic never occurs, then it cannot be selected for. In order to generate a greater variety of variation with conventional breeding, scientists began in the 20s to expose seeds to chemicals, to radiation. And unlike the modern GM technologies, this mutational breeding is largely untargeted and generates mutations at random. Most will be useless, some desirable. More than 100 or 1,800 cultivars of crop and ornamental plants, including 
wheat, rice, cotton, peanuts have been developed and released all over the world. Mutational breeding is credited for spurring the green revolution in the 20th century. In many common foods, red grapefruits, varieties of pasta wheat, are the result of this. Surprisingly, they are still sold as organic. They are not labeled as GM. So our European and brothers and sisters, you're getting it too. So GM screening doesn't have to involve any direct mutation, mutilation of plants or species. It can be instead used to screen for traits as disease or identify natural crosses. Genetic technology has allowed researchers to identify in advance which ash trees are likely to be less susceptible to die from ash disease. For instance, future forests will be grown from these trees. So we might call this genomics informed human selection. We have cisgenic and transgenic food that you are eating. Now this is what people mean and they refer to genetically modified organisms generally. Genes being artificially inserted into different plants to improve yield tolerance to heat, to drought, to produce better drugs, even add a vitamin. Under conventional breeding, such changes could take decades, but we've done it. But the added genes now provide a shortcut. They're just faster at what we've been doing since at least 1920. Now, cisgenic simply means a gene inserted or moved or duplicated. This comes from the same or closely related species. So inserting genes from unrelated species, that's transgenic, is subtly more challenging and an issue. This is the only term in our spectrum of GM technology that can produce an organism that absolutely could never happen in nature. Now since the 90s, crops have been engineered with a gene from soil bacteria. The soil bacteria was just found to have killed a mass quantity of animals. Now we've talked about this before. When um, large varieties of animals suddenly die, I always look at it. And it's thought that over 200,000 died in just a few days of antelopes. Remember that? Well, I've traced it back. I didn't get a chance to put it in the article. But they died from this. A certain bacteria and other engineered crops. They're resistant to certain pests, but even though bugs won't eat them, other animals eat them. And they've died from this. This technology remains the most controversial, as it should be. Because this is what happens. Genes escape. They jump to other species. They could make everything unfit for human consumption here. Well, perhaps unlikely. Fail-safe approaches are designed to prevent this, but we've just seen that happen. And all of these methods are being used. 
crops now cultivated around the world, and have been for more than a decade, know that when there is a release of chemicals, like when we do the poison mining that's happening in Canada, from the nickel mining that has suddenly made people miscarriage, relatively close to me, as a matter of fact, that there are only boys being born, which is rare. If normally, when there is a problem with food or when the environment gets stressed, less boys are born. Well, in Sudbury, Ontario, that is not the case. And then we have to look at what's happening all across Canada. Because now we have the Zika virus up here that I've told you about. The toxins being released are heading into the atmosphere. If it's released at all into the ground, rain will hit that. There's an, a closed system, an uptake system. We know that the toxic cleanup at St. Well, at George Air Base in California faces fresh scrutiny now. Two former base schools were entirely poisoned. And these poisons go underground to the soil. People are now chronically ill. Health issues, exposure to contaminants while based there. It's huge what's going on. We have also Chinese logging mines. Now realize I am not blaming specific groups of people. We can't make that mistake. But corporations are owned by a very small group. Who's that group? We'll go into it in more detail this week, but there was a trigger event in Europe. Several, obviously, but one big one. When the Romanovs were killed, there was a meeting all over this planet of the royals and they decided that could never happen again and they changed everything for us put in new education systems they bought Germany basically Second World War but realize when we look at the Second World War because this is pivotal here the United States built the railroads even though you're sending American men over there to fight the quote-unquote Nazis. Americans built those trucks. Americans built those railways. And after that, they bought the United States. Now, for a while, Rockefeller owned most of the United States. He still actually does. But there are the same groups of people. Royals. These are the Zionists. These are the ones who said never again. And how did they become kings and queens? Not from any royal bloodline. Not from some noble ancient blood. This is a myth. This is a myth they want you to believe. They've even fed it into the alternative media so that we will regurgitate this bullshit to you. It's not true. They got rich and powerful by theft. Being rich and powerful enough to buy mercenaries. Those mercenaries kill people. The more mercenaries you have, you can get farmers. You surround the farmers. 
apprentice become serfs. You surround the farmers and you make them feed your soldiers. Then you steal those kids and train them to be soldiers. This continues on and on and on. They're not special, they're not magical, they're not ancient. These are gangsters. That's why they work so well with gangsters. These are gangsters that have taken over this planet. They ruined Europe. They've ruined the planet. And corruption at all levels makes this possible. This is how it's done. People in positions of power. And if you're thinking that you had a good king or president or prime minister, no. The good kings are killed. The good presidents are killed. These things will never be allowed again. So the Chinese logging company taking over for us in Guyana. Sustainable forests. De Beers taking over beautiful, sustainable land in Canada to get mines. You know, they have extracted two and a half billion dollars in diamonds from lands taken from Atawapiskat, First Nation, through an extension of Treaty 9. 1930. It goes to show that the greatest robberies are the ones that are completely legal. The reserves have been allotted to indigenous people on the territory of the Canadian state make up 0.2% of the land mass now. This arrangement was never intended to be a viable solution. Know that. The reserves were set up as holding facilities, as concentration camps. It was Canada who started the idea of the concentration camps through um, Governor General of Indigenous Affairs. That was transported to Europe. Although there's always been concentration camps, of course. But when Hitler regurgitated that he loved what we had done with the Indians. It was because the royals had seen what we had done with the Indians. And when they sent their soldiers and the ones that they didn't want, basically, what do you do? We have to look back to Brothers Grimm because this is involved in the exact same story. When you have people in your country that you don't want, you send them far, far away. So they will be hated somewhere over there. So the real hatred, even towards communism, was because they stopped stuff like the Romanovs. The big hatred for the Taliban was because they had stopped opium production and the royals had used drugs, opium, all kinds of drugs obviously, to make their fortune. Slavery and drugs. Always, everywhere. This is their modus operandi. And again, I want you to really understand this. They are not different. They do not have Sumerian DNA. They do not have an Anaki DNA. They do not have any magical blood type. They are a bunch of robber barons. So again, what we're seeing here in Canada, right up until 
the residential schools, the forced adoption policy still ongoing that has destroyed the people and today mass incarceration is a method of choice but remains clear that this colonial project of obliteration is ongoing and I realize the people of Attawapiskat are strong they're demanding immediate measures but my native brothers and sisters do not understand what we are up against we will not legislate this away you know I was sitting back listening because people are starting to realize and now I'm seeing people regurgitating what I said it's the diamond wines in that Oapiscat so they're regurgitating it and saying you know we're going to talk to people <laughs> they're going to talk to people you're going to talk to your prime minister your prime minister does not work for you they never ever have they haven't and I realize that my message will seem really low really sad news but these are not beings who care about the destruction of this world obviously don't they are raping it down to the last blade of grass at this point and we're seeing that you know people are becoming awake they can't fool us for as long as they used to I guess if we collectively focus on the fight our combined efforts could alter an outcome maybe but total economic collapse is inevitable and likely and very close and I've done my best to make clear many times that financial collapse must follow biosphere collapse and the bad news from the seas is that fish populations are crashing fisheries are being shut down the global die-off is exploding on this planet there's unprecedented financial meetings taking place that include the intentions of the President of the United States the Prime Minister of Canada and all the heads of state in Europe but not the kings not the queens those people are just getting their marching orders they don't make any choices now the endless money printing from central banks has delayed some of the implosion but it's still coming and ultimately this delay will only impact more catastrophic events as the final remaining resources of the planet are ground up to keep the wheels of the bus going round and round this industrialized militized militarized society moving and the horizon is darkening rapidly how do we maintain motivation to keep marching in a battle what examples has history given us for those who have shown profound strength and courage in the face of unimaginable odds Martin Luther King Gandhi but these ideas are uplifting yes they are and I have diligently searched for inspirational accounts 
of those who refuse to yield in spite of seemingly insurmountable odds. But most of those guys die. Later we find they've been corrupted. Or they were corrupted and put there from the beginning so that we wouldn't realize who was the bad guy. And they only allow the bad guys out there. The they. I'm not talking about aliens. I'm talking about human beings who have stole this planet from under our feet. Because unfortunately, it's really easy to get one of our people to just kneel and take that money. We had the Pope who made a trip to Greece. Supposedly standing up as the EU deports migrants. He went to Lesbos. <laughs> Came back with six kids. Supposedly three families. So they have parents. And of course he's being applauded for this. And his open mindedness. And this is a different Pope. This is not a different Pope. You don't get a different Pope. If the Pope is different, then you would know because he would be dead. He would be dead. The events that are happening right now. And I had said, I'm not going to be doing the apocalypse shows anymore, but how can I not? We have a major event, April 19th. An event that usually has horrific things in and around that day. I'm going to take a little break and get some tea, play some music, and talk to you about this. I wanted to talk to you guys about this privately. And I realize we don't have a lot of people listening live. I've kind of done this um, on the fly. But we need to be aware of what's going on on this planet. It's very, very important, obviously. There are things we can do. Well, easy things, simple things, inexpensive things to strengthen ourselves. There are obviously problems, but we have to realize that there is no country on this planet that can sustain this collapse. They can't. They're not strong enough. They don't have the infrastructure. They haven't put in the money to do this. They are about raping, pillaging, plundering, and they will sign off whatever they are told to sign off. We had 9-11, global trauma. We had the death of Kennedy, global trauma. We had the Second World War, global trauma. And these were staged. Yes, events, horrific, really happened. But they were planned. And they used us against us. They had the good guys and the bad guys. You know, we were told Second World War was the good war. That we had stood up and done something good. We did not. We were manipulated. And I'm not saying that, you know, communism is great. They killed a lot of people. They took the money too. But the people in charge always do that. Governments will always do that. And they have seen what happens when you don't. You get killed. 
So, you know, when presidents and leaders and people who supposedly have left the Rothschilds or the elite bull and shit, you don't leave. So the ones that are coming out and talking to us about stuff have been sent there to talk to you, to lie to you. So you will somehow feel weak. Let's take a little break. I'm going to get some tea. I'll be right back. When we talk about these staged events, there is a horrific amount going on right now. They're admitting that they are dosing us with toxins. They admit this. Um, One was released actually Saturday, Vancouver. But this is happening all over the world. If we find some in the United States, we find them everywhere. Because this already is the one world order. We're already in this world right now. It's already happening. It's already here. They're spraying us with GMO bacteria. Now, this is what the U.S. government admitted to. Now, how the U.S. government, for people in Canada who think we have our own government, know that they're going to be spraying us. So the Washington State Department of Agriculture have approved a pesticide bacteria spraying to be used in Seattle. Apparently to kill gypsy moths. Asian and European gypsy moths. This is again that pesticide I told you about that killed those 200,000 animals. A Bactococcus thermogenesis. I'm probably saying it wrong. It's called BT supposed to kill bugs. But an area in Vancouver was sprayed Saturday. Then it goes to Kent, Lacey, Gig Harbor, Niscali, and Seattle's Capitol Hill. This year, they will use a red and white winged plane to drop the pesticides. 250 feet above ground level. They're saying because the gypsy moths have serious economic and environmental implications. So do you have a problem with that? And given the shady history of the U.S. government testing bacteria on civilians such as San Francisco or New York in 1966 Navy Operation Sea Spray Do you have a cough? This is a chemical test. This is a spray bacteria that killed at least 200,000 animals. Because you spray it, it goes into the crops and they don't care what it does to you. It's that population problem they've been telling us about. So, leading up to the April 19th event, global event, It 
it's a big deal. It's a very big deal because there are, it looks like a couple com countries trying to step out and do something different. That will not be allowed. So, we've spoken of, how do we even say it? The change, this ascension, this process that people are feeling right now. And it's not very difficult to come to such conclusions because the minds are ripe for real knowledge, application, solutions, that is a good thing. The planetary shift will be accomplished. It's happening whether we like it or not. So let's consider an aspect of the part of the, a large part of the population and what it would take to bring this about. And the fact is, consciousness is spreading like a wildfire across the globe. People are becoming aware that these false flags and staged events, strategically staged events, are just that. They come out a week before and say, we're going to stage an event. Then they stage the event, and everyone says, um, do you think that was a stage event when they told you a week before they were going to stage it? They put articles in papers looking for actors to pretend to be dead. It's not just a fad in Western culture. One could only imagine now all of the misconceptions and disinformation moved out of the way and in turn that useless propaganda being replaced by real information that would be a catalyst there would be another wave of a higher biorhythm that would replace all the worn out stories all the fake Illuminati stuff and those old grimoires and Brothers Grimm, that's why they use that word. It's probably not even their real name. Brothers Grimm and Grimoire? It's too close to be an accident. Too close. So these old grimoires from dream demons long since repented, rehabilitated into your local plumber or something. One should make haste as we see now what is on the way. See what we can do to help ourselves. And it's clear that this could be right here and right now. When we accomplish the first task, then we earn admission into the other existences that have already been established here on this earth. Then we will be on their level as we will have our own accomplishments as a planet going from the divided demigods to some universal wholeness. Earth is still a great place to morph into something different. Offers much potential, as many are yet to discover anything of real, of what is really happening here. Consciousness has been so low. You know, like in that that movie, I, I put it up on, the, on a couple of days ago. They live. They talked about a global signal being sent out. It'll sound like I'm just making up fairy tales for you guys. Except when you look at all the cell phone towers. 
we don't need that many. One in the city would be enough. There are more than one in the city. There's people with Wi-Fi in every phone now, in every building. So this is for something else. They're doing something specific. The people in Atawapiskat and all over the First Nations have been suffering for a long time. This event is being triggered. Yes, some of the global events are not being triggered. The shifts, the old faulty pipelines exploding and leaking. This will always happen because they're old and they're leaking and we have no proper infrastructure because they have not prepared to save us. So know that what's happening on other planets and the sun is happening in your body. This has been proven over and over and over again. So this signal, the low frequency signal that they have beaten into our brains, that they have taught us with their repetition and their schooling and their sick ways of learning has left our children vulnerable, left us vulnerable. But the fact that we are here and there's a couple of you listening, well, thanks guys. <laughs> Even a couple in the room, thank you very much for coming in today. But still know there are individual choices to be made right here and right now. So this would be basically like Earth with fully activated unblocked people tapping into nature and the universal energy, enjoying their physical and non physical existence together. Statements like, let's go climb Mount Everest, then astral project from there, would be a general part of the conversation. When you consider the population, the situation though, once more, I see advanced societies with large family. There is really no space problem as magnificent structures could be built. Into the sky, all the way up to space, plenty of room. There are physical habitations that would serve as places to shelter, train people until they learn all they need to know. It is no doubt to me that this is being done now. However, the system could use some improvement, big time as all the good ideas are seldom accompanied with resources to bring them about for everyone. Thus, this particular planet Earth is still version 1.0 with a million different failed beta releases, I guess. And the fact is, the world will so soon get bored if it does not change. The media has resorted to running age-old myths, stories such as Thor over and over again, that fit their idealism of limited planes that they have access to. In addition, they are playing their last card, making everyone think that the possible possible visit to Earth by some alien life form. But we already know, in fact, that alien life and various energies have always been with us. So it is still another stall tactic, unless someone really wises up off the subliminal that they are and keep sending and activates in a large group. Once humans find out that they have dormant powers, 
which we keep seeing this is not mythical that you can make advanced beings within yourself then certainly a new trend will begin and we will have a good chance of removing the controllers without destabilizing this delicate system understand that more clearly people the people have to realize that eliminating all money in government and military is not the immediate answer to this complex problem unless death to a great deal of people is the solution then that makes you no know different than these Saturnian cults who are so dense with bright ideas they seldom bring us into the equation other than you know the sacrifice which is about to start April 19th now eliminating the controllers with the proper plan will be only giving up one ruler for the next one. That has the might and the right to take over the position. A real strategy will be to remove the need for the position altogether. Prevent a situation that plunges the populace who is still need plenty of guidance. This would show throw us into disarray that would accompany moving um, total support structure and we can't do that Canada United States Europe all of the land masses here at this very moment are not set up to properly take care of its citizens at all in need of food and nourishment even if it was a barter system to suddenly suddenly pop up that is not in place and let us not forget most people have been trained to sell services like computer programmers or financial consultants most don't know the first thing about fabrication of goods like a metal smith or a potter so in effect no one On one end, a person would be growing food, but on the other end, would have nothing to trade for. These are all things few have considered as they press towards the ideas of eliminating bureaucracy right away. You can't. An old saying comes to mind, better a defunct system of control than no control at all for people who are not prepared for such responsibility and we are not prepared in general there's always going to be some exceptions to the rule so let's talk about that because we clearly see that the controllers will always be controlling and governing until a total system shows that it has no need for control this often happens on an individual level which is why not everyone's situation in regards to hindrances are the same some have gained full control and mastery over their mental and spiritual and physical body those that are claiming that such things are not possible are just on a long list of people who have never accomplished these things for one reason or another mainly tons of distractions mind building body building spirit building all take precise focus one has to be extremely determined all the time so the correct way is for humanity to begin making a spiritual clear spiritual transformation 
into being perceptive, considerate of the other realms here. We don't have to meet space aliens to do that. Many of the animals and the insects that we are failing to protect right now are actually on another realm. And because we look over them and eat them, our journey has yet to begin in the right direction. People are so ready to see what's next, never realizing that they are actually not going because they keep looking over the obvious. Dimensions have to do with size and shape and weight, etc. When a creature has one different than your schematic, it corresponds to another realm. This is the rule. This planet has rules. This continent has rules. It has rules that you can't live by if you live like you were in Europe. That continent has different rules. I'm not talking about laws and order here. I'm talking about the real rules. For instance, people who lived here for thousands of years knew you couldn't live in one place all year. We have climate. We have floods. We have famine. We have fires. These things are done for a reason. We used to have animals who circumvented the continent. Their hooves, their excrement, even their eating created life, churned the earth, allowed for new things to grow. We followed the herds. That's when I was talking about the heart energy, us following the heart energy. That's what I meant, a physical thing, spoken spiritually. But that's what we did. We knew that there were places like the Midwest that you couldn't live in in certain times of the year because we called it the place of the strong winds. We need those winds to fuel the forest fires. The forest fires need to happen to replenish growth, kill toxins, replenish the herd. This is how this planet works. Putting people in far north reservations was never meant to save those people. Most of those people weren't actually from there. That's one of the arguments trying to go through European laws, of course. Well, where exactly did you live? If you were nomadic and lived here at a certain time of year and then here at a certain time of year and then here at a certain time of year. Where did you live? All over. All over. And you can see a good explanation of constellations by looking at this story of how we moved. And it's much easier to accomplish something deemed impossible when you see others doing it. Many tried to learn the ways of the people here. And of course, their controllers followed them, and that shit ended. In fact, the same competitive nature that has always been present in our species would actually be used to drive people into living together. Ascension, if you like. And you can hear it already, people whispering to themselves that he or she has ascended. It's a chain reaction. If someone's done something, you want to do it too. If it works. If it's good. There are going to be ways. There are things we can do to detoxify our bodies. If you're having a problem breathing right now because they are spraying us, because they want us dead, because they are out of space, because they can't think of ideas anymore. These people think one directionally. 
so they will never be able to think this situation through. So, if you can flush out your sinuses, this can be done with a neti pot. Make sure you disinfect it every time. This can be done with simple water and salt or water and magnesium water and baking soda. You may want to flush your nasal passages out a couple times a day. This will help. This will help immediately. If you want to heal your body the fastest way, eat once a day. It's simple. Eat what you want, do it once a day. Fasting. Intermittent fasting cleans your body out in a mechanism that was built. It is our self-maintaining system. That's it. Simple, easy. Yes, you can start eating special foods, taking special um, drinks. It depends on how much money you have. But these things can be done simply. Eat what you eat. Just do it once a day. Every so often, when you can build up to it, don't don't beat yourself up. Don't force yourself into anything. Start by missing one meal. Breakfast. Or dinner. Whatever's easy for you. I know we're all a little different. Delay. You're eating for one hour. That's it. If you can go three days without solid food, you have rebuilt your immune system. Unfortunately, with all of the toxins that we're getting, you will find that it's easier to do a maintenance level constant thing, I find anyway. So, intermittent fasting. Clean your nose. Rinse your mouth with salts. Try that. Because we are fighting for our lives now. When they admit that they're spraying us, and that is no longer a problem that they are spraying us with a GMO chemical a bacteria and by the way humans have ancient bacteria that may have brought about life itself here on this planet the aliens were bacteria so spraying us with bacteria will have an effect so we must be constantly vigilant and it does not have to cost a lot of money. So the other information. And it's pretty astounding, really. And it turns out that the exact day when reproductions of the Ark that stood in front of the Temple of Baal are going to be erected all over the world. Times Square, New York City. Trevalker Square in London. Two big names. Also the exact date when an important occult festival related to the worship of Baal begins. April 19th is the first day of a 13 day period of time known as the blood sacrifice to the beast or the Baltain. Several names for this. It accumulates on the high occult holy day of Baltain, May, May the 1st. Beltain, it's still Baal. Anyway, in some parts of the world, Beltain is better known as May Day and has been described as the Illuminati's second most sacred holiday. And we have indeed witnessed disturbing series of blood sacrifices during the second half of April in recent years and many people wonder if there is a connection. April 19th is also known as the Feast of Moloch. If you're not familiar with Moloch, it is the ancient Canaanite god that is repeatedly denounced in the Old Testament. This 
is the guardian of the gate. This is the energy that takes over kings. Because it is Cain. This Cain. It is the Red Queen. Unfortunately, child sacrifice is a key figure of the worship of this lurker. I don't know if it's a real entity or if it's an energy that is so different that we can't understand it, but the stories about it goes that it is so horrific you can't look at it. A giant statue of this pagan deity is actually set up at the um, Bohemian Grove, Northern California, every year. Hopefully it falls into the ocean. And hopefully the whole piece of that plate doesn't fall into the ocean the next couple of days. I hope. I pray. Now, is it just a coincidence that reproductions of an ark, an ark, that stood in front of a temple of Baal in Syria are going up in New York and London on the precise day the Feast of Moloch is, is being celebrated and when the blood sacrifice to the beast begins. The organization in charge of this cultural event is called the Institute for Digital, Digital Archaeology. I'm going to read you a little piece from their website. April 19, 2016, in cooperation with national and international cultural heritage preservation organizations, and in conjunction with the World Heritage Week 2016, the Institute for Digital Archaeology will install a monumental scale reconstruction of Palmyris triumphant arc on Trafalgar Square. Through this project and others like it, scheduled throughout the world in 2016 in cities both inside and outside of the Middle East, the IDA seeks to provide an optimistic and constructive response to ongoing threats to history and heritage that have captured headlines over the past year. Our aim is to highlight the potential for the triumph of human integrity over violence by offering innovative, technology-driven options for the stewardship of objects and architecture from our shared past. They want us to be stewards of objects. Doesn't every old book say do not worship idols? Not a steward of the planet. Not a steward of each other. Not a steward of the animals and the bugs and the plants and the water who we will die without. But stewardship of objects and architecture. So they're going to build an ark. Oh goody. All over the world. Not one ark, many arcs. To help us celebrate what? So do you believe this date is chosen at random? You guys are smart, I realize you don't. I'm sure it is just some sort of weird accident that the date they decided begins a 13 day period of time exceedingly significant to the worship of Baal. Baal. The end of April has always been a time of human sacrifice. And this is why we see useless tragedy, senseless deaths during the second half of April. Waco 
April 19th, 1993. FBI assault led to the burning down of a compound, the Branch Davidians, killing 79 men, women, and children. April 19th, 1995. Oklahoma City bombing killed 168 people. April 20th, 1999. Columbine High School Massacre. 13 people murdered. 21 injured. Nice numbers, boys. April 16th, 2007. Virginia Tech Massacre. 32 killed, 17 injured. April 16, 2013, Boston Marathon Explosions. Propaganda. April 18, 2013, Fertilizer Plant Explosion, Texas. Well, 5 to 15 people killed, apparently. The event occurred almost exactly 20 years after Waco. Same area. Also, April 16, 1947, ship loaded with um, ammonium nitrate docked at the port of Texas City, erupted into flames, causing a massive explosion that killed approximately 576 people. So this is actually um, the festival of fire and death. There are many, many other violent occurrences that happened during that time period. In fact, CNN published an article, I think, 2011. I can look it up. I, I have it somewhere. But it was about the mid-April violence, specifically America. Events. That you know, they call us conspiracy theorists. But it basically said, if you look for answers further than the mass media, you are crazy and potentially dangerous and should take your pill. However, the violence continued. So is it a coincidence? And for those in the know, there are no such things as coincidence. The man, allegedly, or at least it was announced anyway, the death of Bin Laden, announced between April 30th and May 1st, the guy who was not actually behind 9-11, was, was really announced on, on May 1st. In that article, I talked about the ritualistic significance of May Day, its relationship to a god that is still very important to somebody, because the cult of Baal never disappeared. He is Cain, he is a king, they worship him, he infects them. He is also the Red Queen, so I thought, you know, seeing the Pope, he's papal, he likes papal, he likes bulls, that's a bull, okay. Papal bulls, you know, to steal our shit. <laughs> so throughout many histories and centuries and civilizations, the second part of April has always been a time of blood, sacrifice, and fire. So this is Enlil, this is Moloch. Baal has taken many names. Spread across the world. A sun god, a god of fertility rituals celebrating Baal, took place after a venal equinox, the time of rebirth, involved human sacrifices. Always. They are officially condemned by religious mo movements, but they have never gone away. April 19th to May 1st, blood sacrifice to the beast, especially in that critical 13-day period. April 19th, first day of the 
13-day satanic ritual method relating to the fire, god of the fire, lord of the fire, the fire god, the Baal, the Nimrod, the sun god, Jesus, I know, also the Roman god, interesting, Saturn, Satan, the devil. It's a major human sacrifice day. Emphasis on fire and children. The day is one of the most important human sacrifices, historically known as such. In addition, let's not forget that um, Tamerlan, do you remember him? Um, Zar Zarnov was shot April 19th to death and the explosion and fire in Deepwater Horizon took place April 20th wanted to note too April well 2016 it's a leap year so April 20th will be the 1111th day of the year triple numbers They're considered power dates for the occult world. So we will look to April 20th as well, not just the 19th. This day, well in recent years anyway, this occult holiday has experienced a tremendous resurgence. Surprisingly enough in Europe, we should know better. But the origin of Beltane can be traced all the way back to the worship of Baal, Middle East. So, Beltane, or Baal, Tame. Baal is probably the closest. Begins April 30th at sundown, lasts until sunrise, May 1st. Beltane is the opposite of Halloween in the Satanic calendar. As Halloween is a time of reaping, Beltane is a time of rebirth. This holiday is a time to celebrate fertility, indulgence, rebirth of spring, the Sumerian god Enlil, Baal. This is where the name Beltane originates. So it could be a good one. It's what we do. We enjoy the resurgence of life. It is supposed to be about bringing, watching the world come awake. They have taken this and filled it up. So before any celebrating took place, wood stood on nine different types of trees gathered. Um, a sacred grid was made. And this was back in, in Samaria, Africa. It's old. It's so old we don't know how old it is. But the grid was created by drawing a square on the ground, dividing it into eight smaller squares. Turf from the eight outer squares were dug out, leaving um, nine squares the ninth square intact. The Baltane fire symbolized the central hearth of a community, the center sun of the planet, the center sun of our galaxy. It was the divine fire. It was supposed to be the center sun of our bodies from where we create, hence fertility ritual. So it was the divine fire, the center of all things, the spark of life itself within mankind. Normally celebrated nude, orgasmic sex, there was no shame. Celebrants would dance around, the mo later the uh, maypole. It's a big phallic symbol. We know what that is. Couples would pair up. They would jump through a bonfire, usually. They'd have sex in the woods all night. It was an intense feasting. We had fun. Humans had fun. 
we celebrated this. It was usually in different places celebrated, and every place on the planet seems to have a celebration in and around April because, you know, spring, and then opposite time in the year, depending on if you're in the lower half of the planet. But rituals around the same time where you could take any lover that you wanted. But the worship of Baal can be traced all the way back to at least a king of Babylon. Enna Markar or En Merkur also called in the Bible Nimrod. He has lots of different names. I still think he's Cain. He established the first New World Order. In the ancient world, he fundamentally changed the course of human history. The elites, the kings, and the queens want to pretend they are related to him. They are not. They are related to Germans. They are German. And I don't care what their little skin color is. They're their family. And we can look at that. So after he passed away, this ancient king eventually became to be known and worshipped as a sun god under a host of names. Marduk, Osiris, Apollo, Jesus. Many secret societies, occult groups, believed that someday this ancient deity would be fully resurrected to walk amongst us again. Although he's been jumping people to people, he's an energy. Lord of the air. Basically, he's an airwave. He, he's Wi-Fi. He's transmittable. Um, he's also called ba Zizu, African. Several. But usually his name starts with Ba. As in Ka Ba. Anyway, this ancient deity would be resurrected. He would come back. He was the returned son. Many Christian scholars are entirely convinced that there is some sort of connection between Nimrod and the coming Antichrist. Although, if you read the story, he was worshipped as the sun god. Well, you know. But... This is not a coincidence that they are erecting arches for this deity. Especially the big ones, New York and London. We could call them gateways. They are being constructed. CERN is one of them too. So could it be possible that they are laying out welcoming signs? Did the Pope not tell us September that he was welcoming the way for the Lord of the earth. This is him. This is the first king. So we have officially entered the time the Bible says the last days. This is it. And if we look around the planet and see the, the disaster going on with our biosphere, doesn't look like exactly that to you? Because it does to me. It does. And that's not all. April 19th. New world currency opens for the first time. It's gold. And it's not debt debt backed. If this is allowed I will eat my socks. <laughs> I will eat my socks. I swear. I will eat my socks. But <laughs> it has to do with the Temple of Baal again and gateways being displayed in New York and London. These are the financial centers of the world. Seeing how I'm always keeping an eye on things. <laughs> okay. I will make chocolate socks just in case. <laughs> but keeping an eye on things that, you know, to 
just a bit ahead of the curve. The Chinese Yan will officially be open for business. Gold backed. The U.S. will be scrambling on how to respond to this. This is why there's so many meetings going on right now. This will challenge the dominance of the world. The almighty dollar would be done. So it makes sense as to why Obama, Biden, Yellen, as well as foreign bankers have their meetings in Washington, D.C. No, chocolate sauce. Socks absolutely count. So, these are emergency meetings. So, they're worried whether or not this means crashing European banks in the worst reports since the Great Recession already happening. Because just about every major banker and financial minister in the world is meeting Washington, D.C. this week following two rushed, secretive meetings of the Federal Reserve and other instances and rare meeting between the Fed Chair and the President alone. These and other emergency bankings and bank meetings around this world causes me to wonder what's going on down. So let's look at the world's event this week just in the banking the money money this has to do with ISIS this has, because that's the dollar side right the S and the two lines that's ISIS so we are going again from a woman's energy into a male's this is the fire she is the water but we can talk about how the two are the same the Federal Reserve Bank of Governors how the, what they called an expedited special meeting last Monday. Closed doors. Can't tell what they were talking about. Someone says that they've got pamphlets or any idea what they talked about. You let me know. But as far as I know, I, I've searched. I can't find anything. And the White House, right after that, made an immediate announcement that the President was going to meet with them. Um, Janet Yellen, the Fed Chair, after money, Monday's special super-secret meeting, and that Vice President Biden joined them. Then the Federal Reserve posted an announcement of another closed-door meeting Tuesday for a specific purpose of bank supervision. That's it. That's all I know. Then a G20 meeting of all the finance ministers, the central bank heads starts in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday too, continues through Wednesday. Then Thursday, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund meet in Washington. That's this week coming. The Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta just revised the U.S. Um, GDP growth for the first quarter um, to a recession of 0.1%. U.S. banks are widely expecting this report to be the worst quarter since the Great Depression. European Union's new bail-in procedures for failing banks were employed for the first time with the Australian bank head of asset um, resolution AG. Italy's Minister of Finance called an emergency meeting of Italian bankers to en engage last resort measures for dealing with the 360 billion euros of bad loans in banks that have only 50 billion in capital. So they're, I don't know, magic. So it's rare for presidents to meet with the chair of the Federal Reserve. Believe that he was summoned because he has no power there. He was told what he was going to do. 
next. So the last time Obama met with Janet Yellen was November 2014, so a year and a half-ish ago. Even more rare for the Vice President to join them. In fact, I haven't heard, well, I've heard, haven't verified, that it has never happened before. Ever. So for security, security reasons, the President, the Vice President, don't regularly attend any of the same events. For any reason. There are, of course, planned planning sessions and emergency meetings where they do go together, but not with the head of the Federal Reserve. Emergency meetings where the VP is included in a planning session would include situations related to some dire national security event, just in case the VP winds up having to take over. So George Bush, Dick Cheney were exceptional to the point that everyone commented on how often the VP was included in meetings with that president. But I always figured that was because George Bush couldn't think and, and speak without Cheney. He, he is a dummy. So, the meeting with the press and the vice press is so rare that the White House is bending over backwards to assume to assure the nation that everything is okay. Everything is fine. Try to relax. Don't worry, we're going to spray you with something. You're going to keep quiet. So, these events, which I'm going to go into in more depth later in the week, is a big deal. And after I heard that, I had not realized that China was on the verge of coming out with their new money. And the Chinese have been flexing the muscles in the South China Sea. But so has the U.S. If the dollar goes by the wayside and the yen is there to replace it, all the posturing military and financial throughout the world by both sides is quickly increasing and once the spark is lit it's game over for the Illuminati powers. If, of course, the Chinese have not completely sold out yet. Reading history, I don't know. We'll know soon enough, won't we? Won't we? So, yen-based gold standard. If China were to partially back its yen with gold, it would require a gold price of $64,000 per ounce, 50 times gold bullion prices today. Now, that's according to a recent article from the Bloomberg Intelligence. I have the article on the page. China has been accumulating a significant amount of gold for years now. They are now the top producer and top consumer of gold in the, in the world. They are believed to keep all their domestic production plus import significant amounts from other nations like Canada. In addition, they've been buying up mines around the gold uh, world, like Canada, at steep discounts and bringing home gold that they had stored in London. It, so the ones with the Nazi swastikas on it from London, they got that. New York and Switzerland, after accumulating all this gold along with their ally, Russia, because China and Russia are going to forget their differences and remember they're freaking related. This is a change. This is a complete change. And will eventually break the middle free from the price manipulation undertaken by the banks and the governments in the U.S., United Kingdom, but all over Europe because, you know, 
it's the Zionist. Not Zion. It's nothing to do with religion, although some have religions. But this is not a religious group. It's a group of rich people. We have to remember that. We can't blame the Jews or the Catholics or any of the Christians or or the Satanists or anybody. It's these rich guys. Pirates. So once price discovery moves from west to east, they will allow the price to float to free market levels and the value of gold they have been accumulating will shoot up. We will have to see what goes on from there. So keep your eyes open for false flags in the next couple days. It's not going to stop. It's pretty obvious to me that these events can't be stopped. And if they can cause a world collapse so that we forget that the planet is in trouble and we don't kill them and they're afraid of their recurrence of what happened in Europe before that brought all this about when when the Russians stood up they don't want that they have done everything to dumb us down so that never happens because we would forget about them and the mother has her own plans I, I don't know what she has planned for us yet we will have to see so been a special report from myself your hostess Tracy Kennedy and I will keep my eyes open on this the next couple days will be strategic and drastic for the planet Earth. And in the next little while I'll tell you about the red alert. This is a red alert from the Red Queen. Because we have done a lot of work. And watched a lot of things changing. Looking at the internet, we are also seeing something very, very important. Not just in the internet, but because I haven't been feeling well, I've had a chance to look at myself. And first, we must change your perspective a little about what pers people perceive to be going on. Because we are living in a world that 94% of the people have no idea why they are here and what will happen when they leave. Generally, in a flourishing society of harmony, these questions would have to have answers that are readily available. That would be in a balanced society. There is no time for excuses, no time for feeling sorry or clueless or defense, if or defenseless, and all that comes with such a reality that we as a species are in some kind of situation very sticky situation I have discovered what I'm calling catch 22 so let me tell you about a few things I've learned along the way before I do I will tell you how I see and how I constantly continuously come to know things and how it in how it all works together. Many think magic works like poof and fail to see all the inner workings of it. What is between the numbers? And humans are truly magical beings. This is the thought we must 
never tire in keeping in the front of our lobes. How it works is when you are alone, attempting to figure all this out, there will only be so much energy that you can truly dedicate towards penetrating such matters as what the hell is going on on earth here. <laughs> of course, I felt this. I feel it a lot. And in addition, one person alone is not worth enlightening by any higher beings out there unless they are sure that they will share that what they discovered with those who, who need to hear it. I was also told that those with the most wisdom will be the most valuable when they contain organic storehouses, the information of our own auras. So basically the human being becomes the archive. We move it about the dimensions. The giant orgone generators affect everything. That's what planets are. That's what our organs are. That's what the combination is. Of all these billions and trillions of things on this planet, we are organ generators and we work together. And that comes to our proximity. This vanquishes the veils, destroys the clouds of illusion. Whether we speak or remain silent or see it or we don't, this happens. The last two weeks, I've been able to do a little bit more than just soak it all in and digest. The occultation that I've talked about before that we're all living in, this occultation itself has been so strong that we're all in it. This reality has been replaced by something else, in actuality. And I know you are feeling this as well. People have these tentacles coming from their body, their chakra centers, especially around their brain areas. When thinking, these tentacles basically plug into others. It's just a way of looking at it. You can feed on information, feed information into a person in order to steer the rest of their thought or for basic milking purposes. This high mind is a system that links organic tentacles, tubes. This is what we do. We link into each other. Like it or not, that's what we do. That's what meditation is. What do you think you're listening to? Praying to? Learning from? You're doing this from each other. When we are listening, truly listening, Actively or not, we are plugged in. I will go into this deeper this week because it's really important. I hope we have time. But all you have to do is not believe in time. And you can't run out of it, right? Because <laughs> it started for me a while ago. With these codes. It was yet to be cracked within me. But then I just thought of women which is a W and an omen. 
Why did the word women contain omen in it? An omen is not necessarily something evil. It simply means something so important it must remain hidden. Not just a regular type of hidden either. To even use the word is to suggest some type of deeply spiritual connection. As the cipher tumbled within my mind, I see that W is 66, which is Kabbalah, making it a 66 omen. 6 plus 6 is 12, 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 is still a W, turned over, and of course 3 is a number of serpents, knowledge of the Trinity, the Celtic systems. There is also a deeper mention of this, with the situation of women and the serpent, not just in the Bible, but in the much older ancient works that simply said something to the tune of for those that know the secret between women and the serpent in glimpsing deeper into the world the true world know why to be leery of the daughters of Lilith who has her consort Samuel I say this for the record. This is not an attack. I marvel at creation itself to make us, but to ignore the obvious will get us nowhere, which is exactly where most people are. Nowhere. Likewise, there's always been a heavy demarcation between the daughters of Lilith and their behavior and the daughters of Meg and their behavior and the daughters of Doma and their behavior. So as you can see, most women find themselves as daughters of previous situations. So it will ultimately what archetype the women chooses to follow. You can see her as that. This late in the game, we have all of us. So it will still be what we choose to amplify. Let there be no mistake. This succubus loose type behavior is being manifested in society. This Lilithian idea. And men can wave no flags here. They find themselves often in the worse shape than this. But it w should be clear that both are fueling each other with negativity. And that is leaving our species super stagnant as we witness the death of love. So we will talk about the Red Queen and her mates. Stay well, everyone. Try not to worry. I know women like to worry. And yes, I know that my gamer name is the Red Queen. I understand the implications of this. I have passed through her many incarnations in this lifetime. I didn't have to wait. <laughs> I've been her. <laughs> I am her. I've grown up. Let's grow up before it's too late. And just be aware of what happens in the next couple of days. Stay alert. And thank you for joining me today. Bye for now, everyone.